Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and today I'm here with Dr. Matt Bayless who is an astrophysicist here at the University of Cincinnati and he's going to explain a little bit to me about how the universe began. So Matt, how did the universe begin? Our best understanding is that the universe began in an instance of uh, in infinite density. The universe was infinitely small and infinitely dense, compressed and expanded out from that. And that's what we call the Big Bang. And it expanded into what we see, what, to everything that exists today. Yep. Everything, all the mass, all the energy in the universe was there at that first instant. Okay. And it has been expanding ever since. And, you know, the laws of physics mean that, you know, mass is attracted to mass, so things change over time. But the amount of mass, the amount of energy, that has never changed. So, so it's still, the universe is still expanding then? Yes. Okay. So how do we know that the universe is c expanding even today? One, the concept that light has a finite speed, that light travels at a particular speed. Okay. So if light reaches you, you know that it took some time for the light to travel to you. Basic distance, um, or uh, rate equals distance over time. Exactly, right. right. Okay. So, as, so as you observe light from a, a thing farther and farther away, you were, it took that light longer and longer to reach you. Okay. And so when we observe things farther and farther away, we are seeing light from longer and longer ago. So as we observe more distant parts of the universe, we are observing them as they were much farther back in time. Okay, so, so something that's really far away, the light that we see now isn't, didn't happen just now. It happened yep. sometime in the past because light had to, had to travel to get yep. here. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even our own, like the sun, which we know and love, is relatively nearby, astronomically speaking. It takes about eight minutes for light to reach us from the sun. Okay. So even the sun, when you look at it in the sky, you're not seeing as it is right now. You're seeing, as it, as, seeing it as it was eight minutes ago. So, so uh, when you're talking about galaxies, it could be... Years to tens of years to hundreds of years to millions, billions, uh, tens of billions is kind of the max. But yeah. So, so, we can, so when we're looking at a galaxy, it could, that, that light, what we're looking at is something that was, could be millions of years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we're looking back in time. So how do we know that then the universe is, still, is, is continuing to expand? So uh, this idea, the way that we actually measure the specific expansions of individual sources is through something we call redshift, which redshift. is literally just light uh, of a particular wavelength. So if you think of blue light as being a particular wavelength, blue light that has traveled from a very distant source in the universe is shifted redward. It's due to the expansion of the universe. Which is, so the light is is getting shifted toward the red end of the spectrum, which mm -hmm. is a longer wavelength than than the blue end, right? Yep. Because the universe is expanding. That's correct. So the light, uh, basically, because the light, imagine a little fo light photon traveling through the universe. It's traveling through space, and that's fine. But underneath it, space is expanding. So it basically has to expend more energy to make it to overcome that expansion. Okay. And light has to follow the rules of physics. It has to travel at the speed of light. So if its speed can't change, but it has to give up energy, the only way it can do that is by basically turning redder or becoming a lower energy photon. So and, the, and that and that is what makes the wavelength stretch out. Right. Okay. Now you have a, a, a little demo yeah. to to help me understand this. So yeah, I have marked on this balloon. Uh, well, we'll see it when it's bigger. But us yeah. and some distant galaxy. Okay. So there's two galaxies on the balloon. All right. So if we have um, say a model of the universe as okay. it was 10 billion years ago, let's say, uh, we might measure uh, our location, us as this x, and the location of some distant galaxies as other x. And literally, what we could measure is the distance between these two things. So you imagine taking a ruler or the, uh, whatever the astronomical equivalent of a ruler is, measuring the distance between these two things, I'm getting something like five centimeters in my arbitrary units here. Uh, so that's the universe at an early time. If we then allow time to run forward under this expansion, the universe gets bigger, or not bigger, but more spread out. So here is our model of the universe, now at a later time. We still have us, we have a gal distant galaxy. Within this model universe, the X is in the same place, right? I didn't actually move the X on the surface of the balloon. The distant galaxy has not been moved on the surface of the balloon, our model universe. But if we actually measure the distance between these two things at this later time, with my astronomical ruler, we now get about seven centimeters. So the distance between us and this distant galaxy has increased, not because, you know, neither, neither thing here was moving in space, but space itself was actually doing the expanding. It's things becoming more separated over time, not because they're moving relative to space, which in this case is the balloon, but because space itself is becoming um, larger. Cool, cool. Good.
Do you love science? Of course you do. So stay up to date on all things science around Cincy by subscribing to our channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Sci Around Cincy.